Yes! There you Dude, go! That's there it. you go! Billy you Sheehan! Just, you just crushed I'm it! Coming for <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Oh, it's weird, isn't it? Sharon, for some reason, you're hiding your bass out of yeah, screen. I, yeah, I am. I, I am, wonder I am. why that could be. <laughs> yeah, you got the new bass, Sharon. I'm really scared Scott's going to steal it from me. <laughs> why? <laughs> really? Well, really dude, give away, give away. <laughs> it, it's, oh, my God. Yeah, that's that's the divine move is just get the sweetest bass and then launch Absolutely. it and oh give God. away. <laughs> Sharon, think about just, you know, the people in the world, how happy they'll be. How you threw yourself on the sword be. and gave this base away. Oh my god! <laughs> Throw yourself on the sword. No, I'm yeah, not. Yeah, you do that it before generous. I do it, Sharon. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Sharon? So, so, like, yeah, update, update. You got a new base, and you got base. it from Nam. 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 Nom. How do you pronounce no, I think it? It's Nam. Everyone calls it Nam. Nam. Tell us the Nom. tell us the story about the base, Sharon. How long is it? You've been. You got the. Were you getting it like ages ago? I've, no, I've got it's like actually, a distant memory of you mentioning it a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, like, it's like yeah. in end of end of October ish. I think they reached out to me and they were like, "We want to give you a base." And I was like, oh, "This has never like, happened no. to me. Never <laughs> happened to me." I'm like, "Me? me? You will give me a base? It was wild." Um, and they sent me a couple of bases that they that they thought I might like, and I was like, "Oh, whatever you want." Like, whatever your favorite of those is, I'll take it. And they were like, no, what what bass do you need? And I was like, mm. I... Oh, so they sent you some bases to try out first? Well, no, they sent me, like, images and, like, specs of bases that they had available. Oh, that's cool. To, like, send me. Yeah. And I was like, what, honestly, like, whichever one is your thing? Because there's just a bunch of, like, five and four string bases, maybe even six string yeah. bases. So I, I have all of those. And I was like... What's well, the name I'll of the manufacturer? Them. They are called RKM. Um, and it's run by two dudes, Rickman and Humberto. And they are the sweetest people on the planet. They're very cool. They're really, really cool. Oh, we're good. And this is like a small kind of, like a small shop, isn't it? They do like yeah. proper like handmade vibes. Super handmade. Just the two dust, of them. Dust, sawdust, so you know. A lot like of sanding. <laughs> I'll tell you what, dude. Yeah, a lot of sanding. I've worked in it as a, you know, I don't know, like a bunch of people already know. But I started out as a as a, an apprentice luthier back back in the day. And the amount of weird sawdust bogies that I got was obscene. <laughs> Boogers? It was obs yeah. <laughs> Just like... It's something I don't know if like bass makers and guitar makers talk about them. Maybe, well, maybe it's everybody like you know back in the day there was sort of like limited face masks. Maybe everybody's <laughs> been a bit safer now. But we were old school, or I oh, was just like young just and breathing stupid. Breathing it in, and, dude. yeah, and I was just sort of like <laughs> breathing it all in. And Jesus, the amount of crap that used to come out my nose daily was it was it was an issue. Put it that way. And I've got oh. a sizable nose as well. But anyway, so. So these guys are sort of like, are they Mexico's version of Federa? Is that the, like, the comparison? So they just rebranded. They're about, like, six to eight months old, RKM as we know it. Um, yeah. But they existed, like, for 15 years before that. And then now they're trying to break out into the world. And they're doing cool. a really And were they doing job. bases before? Yeah, they were doing bases before. So they've always done bases. Yeah. Hold up the base then. Let's have a... And just to, for context, <gasps> Don't do it she yet. hasn't shown us this base. I haven't even seen a glimpse well, I mean, of this know, base. I've seen this base. But hey, if yeah, you're not watching, if you're not watching the pod on YouTube, you might be missing out. But for all of the audio listeners, just imagine oh, yeah. a lovely base. We'll describe it for you <laughs> as she holds it up. <laughs> or just go over to YouTube and yeah, check out the video. Go over to YouTube. Please, yeah, please, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, are you ready? It is a fretless. Ready. It is a fretless because so eventually I I told them well what I need is a fretless and so they went ahead and they built me a fretless from scratch. Oh, amazing! And this is it. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! What's Look that finish? That. It looks wild. It's so cool. Has it got a gold finish? Yeah. Yes. It's a gold is it gold? Leaf, yeah. Like twenty-four karat gold beef finish. Crazy relic. That they like oh, burned. It's outrageous. Yeah. So it's relict gold leaf. That yes. is cool. And That's it's cool. The prettiest thing hey, is so the it's headstock. a bolt on. Things that are jumping out to me that I can see. It's not um, a bolt on. Okay, so it looks. I was going to say, but where are the bolts? What's it's the set. What, what's? It's a set. So neck. it's a. 
Oh, so it's like to get that. What's the the methodology to get it to sound like a bolt on and have that punch, but have it feel great? I just want. The... I don't like bolt on bolt on that much, so I just want to. Set Do you not like bolt on? You want it to set neck. It looks beautiful. And what's in terms of the? Is it Seymour Duncan's? They're soap bars, right? The the pickups. Yeah, what's going on there? Um, this is Nordstrand pickups, and Trickfish preamp. Yeah, it's it's Labella strings. Carrie, Carrie Nordstrand was there, and I feel like it's a new. It, they're like uh, dual coil yep. pickups that he makes, and then they're yeah, Trickfish IPA, which is a new pre, and man, how the controls are laid out is really interesting yeah. too. How are I they? I still like that. It's like different colored, like. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're cool, aren't they? Yeah. What Do you remember how those like... controls are laid out, Sharon? I don't even remember. Okay, I think it's. Mm, I might be wrong. Okay, bass, uh, mids and highs, pickups, and then um, I believe it's tone yeah. and volume. Oh yeah, on the stacked. Yeah. And I then what do the switches do? Do you remember what the switches do? Yeah, we've got the coil switch. Coil tap. Yep. And, yep. And yep. then we've got yep. active passive. Uh, it's really yeah. cool. Oh, and then it's got, this is a really cool feature. It's got oh, this yes. thing. It's got an air tag in here. So if someone steals oh, the cool. base, I can just like watch them on my phone waddling off and go knock on their door and be like, bro, get back. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody like me who, de who deserves, who you deserve uh, a base stolen from. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's sto that base got stolen from me as well, okay? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Um, We're all Sharon, play it. We want to hear it. Give us a little something on Disclaimer, it. Disclaimer, it's a fretless. I have not played fretless in a while. <laughs> tuning, tuning is an issue. That's lovely. <laughs> Sharon was like, oh, I'm going to go oh and pick God. up this bass. Sharon, you know, before oh, we, we got it, she was like, I'm going to go pick up this bass. And, and they're like, <laughs> Carrie Nordstrand's going to be there. The Trickfish guys are going to be there. And then they're going to give it to me and expect me to play something on it. And I was like, yeah, of course. This is oh, Nam. The worst. The worst. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, and I'm going to be all out of tune and it's going to suck. And they're going to be like, why the fuck are we giving her a bass? <laughs> there must have been like, I don't know, like if it was me, I'm, I'm sensitive to this kind of stuff. I'm not sure you are, but. I would be, I'd be bagging it thinking, what happens if I don't like the bass? So you hadn't played one of their basses beforehand, is that correct? Oh, that would have yeah. freaked me out. Oh, I, I was, I was low, key, yeah. low key freaking out, but then it was good that- Just in case you didn't, yeah. But I don't have a fretless. So like, worst case, it is still filling like a gap that I don't have. It's still a bass yeah. that I need, that I really want. Yeah. So until I would get like something that, I would like more, I would have this. But thankfully that wasn't the situation and I really, really love it, so. Really play us it, a yeah. G, play us a low G and play us a low D. This is the G, five string. Yep, and play us that low D. And then low D, low D, like yeah. that one. Yeah. It's cool. it's it's a good. Good. <laughs> well, it's like, it's, it also, I mean, it, they put labellas kind of like a heavy set of labellas on it, which yeah. are really warm and beautiful. But you know, yeah, Sharon, you were saying like, maybe to get more moi or more of that fretless yeah. thing out of it, you could what? go rounds. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could definitely go rounds. And, and um, like I've seen, I was with Gary, we were record Gary Willis, we were recording something over here in the, uh, in the UK. Um, and I'm, I'm pausing because it was in Castleford, <laughs> <laughs> which is like not the greatest place. I was like, flew Gary over and I took him to Castleford. Everybody in the UK that, that knows that area will be laughing right now. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, with Gurgo Borrelai as well. Hilarious. Anyway, but he was playing his fretless and he was like, huh? And he was like doing one thing with it. And he was like, oh, it needs a bit more, bit more moi. So he started, he was, he just, um, he straightened out the truss rod and it was instant. Mm. He like played it beforehand. He put like a quarter turn on the truss rod and then he played it again and it was like instant Mwah. So I get like, if anybody out there listening and you have a fretless and it isn't doing that thing, try and straighten up the truss rod a little bit because that sound comes from the, the round wound string hitting the actual board right. as it's vibrating. So it needs to hit the board. So if it's if the action's too high, you're not going to get it. Hey, Sharon, what like in terms of of, the, of this bass as well that you've got? If people want to go check them out, 
where do they go in terms of website and also how much are they um they go to arcanbasis.com they've got a shop there and they are anywhere from three to seven k as of right now uh, that's pretty reasonable is, isn't it like what's the, the you know like when quality? you're buying a, a, a when you're buying a, a custom instrument what's the range like i honestly i don't know it seems like three is pretty low, you know. Three like, is low, three isn't it? Three is very low. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I mean, the prices are going up, up, up. It's crazy. <laughs> like, you know, when um, when Spencer and I with Lull like spec this out, like these have cost uh, uh, fifty four ninety nine. And I remember thinking, even just a couple years ago, when we were thinking about that, thinking, "Ooh, that's like that's a pretty hefty price tag." But now, I thought they were more. I thought they were more. No, these think, are fifty four well, ninety nine. The, they had the Easter egg one go out on the last run, yes, and that one was those like are more. seven seventy five. Those are, I think, like sixty nine ninety nine. I think, yeah. but but it's wild to see all of these builders. I mean, I feel like you don't see stuff much in the three four. It's pretty much like five and up, kind of. Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like a really nice custom base these days is somewhere between five and twelve. <laughs> <laughs> depending it on, it can you know, go even yeah. higher if you're, yeah, going. of course. And I mean, we saw, so I stopped in too and hung out and played. There was a green dual P P base that I played that I, I still think about. It had two, it had white, like cream covers, yeah. dual P with a big chunky neck, which I love. And it sounded mm. awesome. I think it had a Sadowski preamp in it. But then Yannick Guizdala was there a day before, and there was a blue dual P that he played, and I think he bought it. Um, and it yeah. had, dual P, man. Maybe yeah. there's like a thing. Dual like, P. This, yeah. It was cool. Uh, F, F Base have made dual Ps in the past. There's a great video of Mitch Starkman playing one. I think it's Mitch Starkman mm. um, that played one. I know that he's done a bunch of videos for F Base, and it sounded amazing. Yeah. So and every cool. time I look at it, I'm like, oh, dual P. I've never played one. What was it like? Uh, the dual P? It was very cool. I mean, you know, it's hard to get any sense of anything at NAM, right? Yeah. But um, well, I'm going to go nerd out on the website. What yeah, was NAM like out. anyway? What was what was your like? What was it like? Should I have come? Always um, yes. Well, of course you should have come. <laughs> I will say though, like the amount of people that we talked to, and the amount of people that just wanted to talk. I mean, especially like once we got into sort of base zone yeah. at yeah. NAM, it was crazy. There was so many people that were just like coming up and saying hi and saying, you know, talking about SBL, referencing specific videos. And I feel like you would have just got mobbed, Scott. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, you know, a lot of people coming up to me, a lot of people coming up to Sharon. And if you were one of those people, thank you so much. Absolutely. It was so fun. Like all I wanted to do was just look people in the eye and talk to them about, you know, how they were enjoying the show. And if they had questions about SBL or about content or base stuff, I mean, it was awesome. So, you know, it's that thing of like, if you like talking to people, it's, it's great. And if not, <laughs> I think like, that's my problem. That's my problem. Dude. Like I am a weird little recluse. I really am. You know, like these guys just for context have tried to get me to go to NAM for two years now. Yeah. And I'm, I am resistant. I'm yeah. resistant. It's well, one, it's like freaking 11 or 12 hours away. Yeah. Which is brutal. And I feel that with flight, I just think I'd, I'd, lose my entire week and then <clears throat> on top of that i am a bit of a recluse but even like i've done the london base show and that was up and running and that was really fantastic and enjoyed it loved it actually so i do think that i would absolutely love it when i'm there it's just the resistance <laughs> oh, I know. I was, the resistance I was real Ian, i was like man <laughs> if scott was here you know how you are scott like if you like something you want to keep doing it and then you're like Let's go harder. And I was like, if Scott was here, he'd yes. be like, guys, next year, let's get a fucking booth. <laughs> yes, dude. If you were there, you if you were there, you would immediately go, okay, next year we're getting a booth and our booth is going to be the biggest booth and we're going to invite everybody to play. We're going to have all the coolest bases, all the coolest amps, coolest pedals, and it's going to be a hang. And like, that's what you would do. You'd go, I know, I know, I know what we're going to do. And, I know. and it maybe that's why so I'm not going. Sick. It would be well, that's so what we did sick. with with the London Bay show. That is an, ultimately what happened. I think for the last two or three years that that ran, 
we did like the SPL room and it was a met we like flew over like Henry Glinder and Rich Brown and Gary Willis and there was just this um I think Goucher came over. There was this slew oh, a hang. of a mate. Yeah, it was a real hang. There was it, it was sweaty. Were you there for Gal? <laughs> Bobby, Vega. Bobby oh, yeah. Vega was there, we brought and there was this one particular moment where it was just the room was so full. I can't remember who was playing. There was it was so full. And like after the show, like people almost like just fell out of the, <laughs> of yeah. the room. Yeah, 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 it yeah. held maybe like 200 people, 250. Oh. And it was just jammed. It was definitely oh, like a health God. and safety risk. I don't know what was going on there. It was I like, love it. Yeah, it was it was as geeky as, as bass could get. But well, it was I, but yeah, but to you I would love to come. I would I need to just Maybe next year is the year. I don't know. I don't oh, know. my Maybe. God. You heard it here first, everybody. We're going to hold you to it, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, now that you've said it publicly on a podcast, yeah. people yeah. are going to yeah. mob you into it. This I year, though, it. that booth, um, the unofficial base hang booth, I think, was Trickfish. Like, so, yeah. you know, Trickfish had a booth. There was oh, a okay. Mike the, Lowe the base there. The one that everybody just ended up yeah. going to. Yeah. yeah, and it was yeah. open air. It wasn't a room, so it couldn't be cranking but they yeah. released a new line of pedals that were super cool and they released a new big amp i think like a five thousand watt amp. yeah what is it the trick fish amp yeah it's big it's big. Like big but but, it's, just, but so, it's light whoever came up with that sort of like you know size isn't everything it's a bit bullshit <laughs> <laughs> look at the size of that i saw it on instagram and it's i was crazy. like crazy yep Ooh. I know, but it's also really lightweight. Don't care what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, right, right, because it looks good. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. It's it's. I think the actual amp itself is like twelve pounds, and in that head case, I think the whole thing is maybe twenty twenty five pounds, something like that. But it was. Oh, so it's really light. Yes, yeah. I actually thought it was like a massive heavy, valve amp, yeah. heavy no. as a washing machine. Yeah, it's like two big Pascal uh, power sections, so you can do a thing where like you could set up a keys rig on one side and then an electric right. base rig, or you can bridge them together and get five thousand watts, which is wild. Yeah, um, yeah. and and that was the booth that everybody was hanging out. Um, you know, just like. Herrera was there, Jonathan Herrera, who I'd never met in person. That was so cool. Corey McCormick yeah. from Lucas Nelson's band was there, you know, Steve Jenkins, Goucher, you know, like so many people came over and hung out. I got to do a like a little demonstration of this Mike Lull bass there, which was a blast. And a shout out to Spencer and Maddie, who just like took care of Sharon and I when we were there. Like they were yeah. like, hey, coffee first. And oh dude, I Food? That, food yeah let's you know i'd be talking to people and maddie would they come were basically up. the parents in the room no. yes maddie well, would come up beside maddie me and sort of like the parent in the room <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. shout out madison oh man she'd be she would come up to me and like kind of like touch my arm and say are you hungry you know and i'd be like yes thank god you know and we'd go get food but there was a thing at the very end of the oh show where you know i was getting my stuff and i had a huge full just like giant starbucks coffee that my stupid big hands like puppy hands knocked over and it splashed no. all over one of their rigs and all over somebody else's base i'm so sorry i don't know whose base i splashed coffee on if it was you i apologize and then there was no nothing you to clean it up with dude smooth bastard oh it was you awful smooth. oh it was Wait, awful but he, he like just like knocked over this coffee and he's like oh and then he like kicks <laughs> over a water bottle <laughs> i did i just like had no idea where my limbs were in space just like oh like a dinosaur in a city better. you know and spencer and i are just like laughing our asses off oh thanks cool guys yeah thanks love that <laughs> and maddie went and saw it happen and immediately went and got a handful of paper towels and as i was like looking around like an idiot she's like shoo Here's the paper towels. And I was like, you are incredible. It's unbelievable. I have no idea where she found paper towels. Me neither, dude. It was not easy to find. Uh, she anyway. probably got that. She probably got it all, all sorted beforehand. She knew. She knew. You know, she I know a few people like with. that. They know just in, case, in, just in case of emergency, they're like, oh, that's where the paper towels are. Um, who, which people did you get to see play that you found surprising, that surprised you? So for context, mm. I've like been to these events before and and sometimes you can see these incredible players and and they play and you're like huh yeah 
it's not surprising. You expected them to be incredible. Yes. And, and yes, they were. Right. But is there anybody that jumped out when you watched them play and you and they just were more more sort of like surprising than, than you thought they were, they were going to be? The one that comes to mind for me is Herrera, Jonathan Herrera, who who I'd never met in person, uh, works for SBL, used to be the editor at Bass Player Magazine. I mean, he grabbed this bass and just gave it a tr and just gave it a proper thrashing. I mean, it was just <laughs> absolutely awesome. And I was like, dude, you were a freaking monster. That's the guy that comes immediately it, yeah. to mind for me. Yeah, he sounded so good. Yeah, Is there anybody what for about you, you, Sharon? Shaz? I mean, we saw Giacomo, which was just cool because you're seeing oh, him yeah. like blazing. He's he wasn't playing bass, but um, you see him blazing on Insta every day, and he was just like casually doing his thing. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, you know who else too? Steve Lawson. Steve was oh, there, yeah. and he had his bass, but he also played this one. So I just made everybody play my bass because I love hearing other people play an instrument of mine. It's just so different, you know. Can I get such a kick out of it. Yeah, can you remember that, like the old Nam videos back in the day? Yeah, bef before Instagram, mm. and like everybody used to go to Nam, and then all of the Nam videos would be put on YouTube, and everybody freaking out, yes. and it was like the the world's window into that experience. <laughs> yes, because, Bobby Vega, because there wasn't anything else. Oh, yeah, yeah, Bobby Vega. Yeah. I can remember the first time I saw. Yannick might have been on a mm. Nam video. The first time I saw Hadrian Ferro was on a <sighs> on a Nam video, and there's a great. I am probably not going to go and find this video because I've looked for it in the past, and it's out there somewhere. Maybe I will. Um, and it's it's Yannick playing. Um, he's playing his Federa, mm. and he's just ripping. And in the booth next to him is Hadrian Ferro. And I oh think God. that this is before they knew each other and, and were friends. And the amount of like testosterone, <laughs> is, it's like, and like, like specific bass testosterone, it like leaks through your speakers of your computer. It's like, the, it was so cool to see it because you can see like Yannick's like just tearing because he yeah. knows that like Hadrian's a beast and Hadrian's like looking over and he's like, it was, Fucking awesome. <laughs> anyway, they, they ended up great friends and all of that. Oh. But it was, it was, yeah, it's a fun video to watch back in the day. It's interesting. Then, it's not yeah. a place for subtlety. You know, like it's so hard to hear anything. You know, so if you show up yeah. at a NAM booth and you're like this. You know, like it doesn't, it doesn't not, Nobody work. hears anything. Nobody yeah. hears yeah. anything. So you have to show up and like either, you know, either you're, you're, <laughs> don't care and you just play what you play or if there's you know you kind of have to have a few things to do if you want to participate in that sort of like game of was oh, that here's... game going on like back oh. in the day because it hasn't really i haven't seen that much of it on online maybe it's I'm, I'm actually trying to make a little effort to not go on social media so much so maybe that's it but um, but back in the day, I can remember like watching like there'd be people there with loopers and they'd be playing and like looping and an F bass would be there and people there'd be like duets going on. I can remember there's a great video of Michael League playing with Yannick. Mm. Well, I think Yannick's playing keys. There was like a lot of that jamming type of material going on. Was that, ha I did see something with Corey Wong. Yeah, Corey he was there something. at the Bachi booth. Yeah. Was and there I, a lot of man. that going on or not? There wasn't maybe a lot of it. The bocce booth had that happening. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a, like, I don't know if they've cracked down on volume, but there were definitely, like, NAM police, you know, mm -hmm. walking around yeah. with, with DB meters saying, like, oh, can, you know, that happened like, to Trickfish. Yeah, like, you guys need to turn it down. Yeah. 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 Um, they have, like, designated stages now. So, like, Dingwall had a couple of, like, they would just have their artists play somewhere else and, like, you would go there to see it. So it's not as like everywhere, every corner you have a performance because some people are just like headphones. And you're yeah. Like, so yeah. people don't yeah. hear it, just you hear it. Yeah, it's a little bit more, I guess, modern where they're trying to be a little bit more. Yeah, It's a le less of a sort of like a a bait, <laughs> like bass carnage, like a riot. Yeah. Oh, it's still there. I mean, <laughs> it, the Trickfish booth still was there. one of those. And then yeah. Trickfish was, it was Trickfish here and then this like, acoustic guitar oh, pickup yes. company right across and then but they were like loving tricks yeah they apparently the first day was just a little bit of a nightmare bit edgy yeah. whoever yeah. organized that did not think that through. oh man yeah but that that company too that was doing the acoustic pickups had like <laughs> performances 
almost constantly. Yeah. Like it was like someone was in their little stage playing all the time. So Trickfish was sort of like, ugh, like we we either have to just interrupt them or we're never gonna, you know, like if someone's just playing there all the time, well, yeah. Ugh, yeah. But that, that's a just that's a tricky thing, you know. Um, wow. No pun intended. Tricky. Interesting. <laughs> was anybody like we've? I know that we've we've got your top your top picks. Yeah. Of the uh, of Nam, so Ian's top picks and Sharon's top picks. But did anybody um, like disappoint you? Was there anybody where you were just like you were excited maybe of, of them being at the show, and like and they and you turned up and they weren't at the show or they were at the show and just you know. There yeah. was Ian's Ian? nodding. <laughs> Ian's Ian, nodding you, for anybody listening. <laughs> do you want to take this one? I was so excited because last year I went up to this booth and it was a letdown. And I thought, surely, <laughs> surely this year, this booth is going to be fantastic and will right the wrongs of yesteryear. In their defense, it was better than last year. <laughs> Barely. Last year... They had a sign, that was like line <laughs> six. It's like we exist, oh. and that's it. There was like bare. There was. I don't think there was even a pedal. Like it was just like literally a sign. So we walk into the Yamaha room. Yamaha owns line six. They own Ampeg too. And there's yeah. a hu there's a performance going on now. I don't know how long those performances are going on, and all good, whatever. But I wanted to see a big Line Six display, and it was—it is so small, and no one around to to help out, or and they didn't even have a an HX stomp on display, which was bizarre. I mean, they did have a Stomp XL, but the just the flagship like HX just stomp, one, just one, just one. Like you, and and and, and <laughs> hey, it could be that I missed it. Maybe you know, maybe it was hidden around some corner but it is bizarre to me i mean you know uh i love that product i love that platform and it is just it just so <laughs> such a bummer to see like i feel like line six artists or people that are associated with that should be talking about it performing doing a thing like i think it's the coolest multi -effects. is there any line six artists <sighs> yeah right i mean i think so i wanted to say like do they give a shit Right. Ooh, yeah. I know. Right. It feels like no, and I hate it feels that. Like, I, like, yeah, but like, and you know much more about this than me because you've been playing them for a long time, and and you know, and I'm like a, I don't know, like a dinosaur, or whatever. But you are like you use that thing all the time, and, sure and my do. assumption is that if there are line six artists, you would know about them. And potentially I think that you probably should be one because Maybe of the amount of the amount of HX stumps people have bought off the back of you, you playing it. But do, like, I know that you haven't spoken. Well, I know that you're, you're not, you're not an official artist or anything like that. Have they got official artists? Yes. They do. Oh, did you look? I Sharon? think I see that I am, Sharon's on am, the interwebs right now. I am looking at a buttload of artists mm. oh really and one of them is our good friend billy sheehan <laughs> no oh way. sure yeah okay yep it's it's interesting because right so okay a buttload of artists and then just i feel like not a lot of online representation so i don't see them doing stuff with artists online and they certainly weren't doing anything at nam at least not that i saw and i I don't I don't say this to take a shit on them. I I just want more. I want more because I love that product. I think it's one of the best products that's ever been made, honestly. And it's weird to me that I feel when like did, they're when just did not Yamaha in the space. Yamaha buy them? When did Yamaha buy them? That's a good question. 2014. Wow, so they've owned like TC Electronic are a great example. Can you remember <sighs> when TC Electronic owned the base amp world yes. owned it, owned and then it. Korg, yeah. and then Korg bought. Was it and Korg? Screw, they screwed it. I think it was Korg. Uh -oh. Was it Korg? Wait a minute. <laughs> no, I think it was Behringer. Behringer. Did, yeah, Behringer. So Behringer bought them and totally screwed that up. Like I, I don't like there are TC electronic amps, but but we don't frankly, hear about them anymore. Nobody, nobody cares. Twenty fifteen, okay. Twenty fifteen, and what? And and Line Six was acquired in twenty fourteen by Yamaha. And Scott, you mentioned know. that thing of like Yamaha wanting to to, to do it. They have like a slow growth model, which is they've very got like a, I guess sort of a, yeah, an interesting culture around sales because they're 
you know, it's it's not, you know, they're out of Asia. I think it's Japan, right? Yamaha? Yeah. Um, so it's a different culture around growing. So it might be that. But all that said, I think that it still would feel nice if there was maybe a, like more support or recognition for us like yourself. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> just, I just saying. <laughs> I, I mean, hey, I, I could probably be more diligent too about like reaching out to them. But hey, hey, line six, holler at your boy. Hey, line six. <laughs> hey, hey, line six. <laughs> How about your boy? Top picks. We said top three, Ian. You've got more than three. Oh, I got but so we'll, many. We'll um, let it slide. Do you want to go first? And then Sharon, do you want to take your three after Ian? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, top top three. Um, well, we mentioned Trickfish, so, I'm, so that's in there. But also- So Trickfish is one of them, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to give a shout out to- um, to Spectre because they just did some, these new Doug Wimbish models that were like a throwback to the very old five strings. Oh, classic. did they do them? Yeah, yes. they got it sorted, yeah. And they classic old EMGs with the old logo and the big sort of like, um, oh, what do they call the headstock? Like a Gumby headstock, I think they call it yeah, that. Yeah. And that was so fun. Ran into Uriah Duffy over there, which was so cool. What a cool dude. Shout out to you, Uriah Duffy. Such a Great monster guy. player, cool guy. Um, and the whole team at Spectre. So that was really fun to see. I got to play those and hold them and see the, that old EMG logo. It just, you know, it's like nostalgic for me. But um, another one that was a big standout that I wasn't sure how I was going to feel was Stradi or Stradi. I don't know how to say it, um, but they are absolutely incredible. It's a husband and wife team. Are they from um, Poland? Yes. Poland? Merrick, I believe, and Aga. That's, and I might be pronouncing their names wrong, but um, I believe a husband and wife team that make these crazy. They sort of look like um, a massive violin. Yes, yes, a massive violin. And to most, me, I reckon most people listening to this will have seen images of these bases because they're so stunning. Yeah, and we'll throw some up know, here as well. Probably won't know who make them. Yeah, so yeah. It's Stradi, Stradi with an I on the end. Yes, I capital I. Okay, S T R A D I. Yes, and uh, aesthetically, it's not my, my thing, right? I, I can't imagine taking one of those to a gig that, I, that I'm that i playing, but they are v just as a piece of art and as, a, as a, a design in the space, they are striking. And I thought, ah, like I've always appreciated them, but never really been like, I don't know that I really want to play one, but this time I played one and I got into a space and it was a fretless five that had black strings on it. And it went like, it did the fretless thing that I love, which is that super slow envelope, like, bruh, like it sounded like a cross between, <laughs> but like a piezo pickup in the bridge. So it sounded like a cross between an upright and a synthesizer. It was right, like, got it. Yeah, yeah. like low G's were just, I was like, oh my God. Like they had them set up really low. And yeah. I was really taken by that instrument. Um, and that really surprised me. It was and did very freaking cool. Did it have a cool. magnetic pickup pick as well? It did, it but just... it was hidden. So it was one of those oh, ones, right, that the fingerboard nice. went all the way through to the bridge. And the magnetic yeah. pickup was somewhere underneath the fingerboard, right? And then the bridge had piezo, piezo. The elements. first people that I saw do that with the with the fretless with the with the fingerboard running all the way right down to yep. the bridge was actually Marlow. Yes. You no know, Marlow bases. Of course. They were the original ones that I think did it back in the day. Ah uh, yeah. And obviously it's great to see that I'm, but obviously I'm sort of like I might not be then maybe they didn't influence Stradi, but you know, it's great to, great to see people s still using yeah. that like design aesthetic of the fingerboard running all the way through because yeah. it's so cool. Yes, it is. I can remember the first yeah. time I saw it and it was like, wow. That Marlowe bass is called a diva, I believe, as well. And I think you're yes. right. I think it was the first yeah. one. Um, were Marlowe cool. there? That, oh, were they, they were, there but or not? they didn't have their own booth. I think maybe they did, but I was looking for them. I, I saw that the Spock bass, which is the one with the- The hemp bass. Yeah, the yeah. hemp top. Um, that yeah. base was there, but we didn't actually hang out uh, at the booth. Last shout for me, um, well, I'm going to stick two in there because you can't stop me. Uh, Madison um, had, and that was the Henrik Linder. Am I correct on this, Shaz? 
Is that Madison bases? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That has yeah. the Henrik Linder with, with the true temperament frets. Yeah. Henrik was at the trick fish booth, got to play a little bit of, of his bass that uh, Madison makes for him. And, and was that, Mr. Madison there? He was. Yep. Got oh, to shake awesome. his hand Great. and it was so cool. That bass was really interesting. Again, it's a, like a little too much. It's a little too much bass for this guy, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it makes you a little dizzy if you're like. Oh staring yeah, staring at the fretboard. It's like, it's yeah. so weird. And so many strings and yeah. um and and lastly, I'll just I'll just shout out Alinto because you know that that company is now um, run by James Carbonetti, Eric Coco, and uh, Mitch Friedman, and they yeah. were all there, and they had made some amazing, like really cool bases for the show that were beautiful and like interesting woods. They had like one that had a spalted maple neck. That was oh, really wow. cool and, yeah. and just like just awesome. I love that Super they're doing nice, the yeah. vintage thing, uh, but uh, but in kind of a their own way. They're not just carbon copying a Fender, you know. They're doing kind of yeah. a, a really cool, unique take on it. Really thin necks too. I played some necks, Scott, that were like thin front to back. That I feel That's like you would be. I know you would be like hell yeah, yeah dude. Like yeah, I like a little yeah. more, a little more meat. But but there were some I played that were really thin C's that I feel like you'd really dig. Um, yeah, that's what awesome. I got. Awesome. I would love next time I go to New York. I really want to go hang out with them. Guys. You got to. Um, Sharon, what are your top three? Hit Obviously, me. RKM. I mean, yeah, RKM blew for, me away. for the number one spot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I kind of have to. They gave me a place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Honestly, Strati. Ian made me play the bass. Oh, really? He, yeah. Strati as well, yeah. Well, he was like, he was playing it. We were in that like, little booth mm -hmm. on each other, and I was filming, and he was like, it just makes me want to play a sad bass line. <laughs> it did. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, what was the like, price like on those? Are they oh, really we don't expensive? Know. I didn't even want to ask. Yeah. Do they um, look expensive? They sure do. They really yeah. do. Yeah, I feel Something. like, because they're all so handmade. And I was talking to Aga, just asking her about how much time she puts in sanding just a specific part of the base. And she's like, oh, it's like a full day to do this one area of the base. And I was like, oh my God. I mean, you know, so yeah, intense. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they were 15 grand. Well, mm -hmm. I've got the prices here. Oh. Uh, not, not all of them, but. This one is called the Stradi Big Daddy. So I like it. Just, just that makes me like it more. Big wow. Daddy. You would. The, them two words added to anything make it just a bit cooler, don't they? Anyway, hey, Gav, can you remember Big Daddy the wrestler in the UK? Oh, anyway. Big Daddy. Anyway, so Big Daddy looks very expensive. It looks, it's the full thing. Um, it is £5,300. That's it. Oh. So, prob so probably about $6,200, I would say. Oh, Strati, and maybe you need to raise your prices. One, two, three. That is a no, six No, 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 no. Let's first buy some and then raise <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. that is wild. The, I, see, yeah. I would have thought they'd be so much more. Yeah, to me honest. too. That's insane. Very yeah, cool. You know, it reminds like me that. when I ran into Marlowe in the uh, at the Germany show. I was shocked. All their bases had sold immediately, and yeah. I was shocked at how little they they you know like charged for them. I was like, you yeah, guys need to yeah. raise your prices. I I don't know. It it just well, felt kind well, of maybe, like maybe some guys in the states need to lower some prices. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> huh? 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 How about that, Allison? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I know. So sorry. What a what a jerk. I mean, like, I don't know. But, okay, all right. The reason I'm saying that, here's the thing. The reason I'm saying that is because I see how much work goes into this stuff. Yeah. And it's like everybody's, it's like their entire lives are devoted to this, you know? And yeah. so. I, for, I will, can I just, huh. just for the record, I will say, I don't think that anyone in the States should lo <laughs> lower their prices, just for the record. And people in Europe prob pro pro should probably raise their prices. Is, to Ian's point, you know, there is not a lot of money uh, in custom made instruments. So I think that those guys really need to get, be rewarded for the work. I think doing. so. So just for the record, um, I just couldn't help myself. What else, what else, Shaz? Is there anything else in there for you? Um, I went to check out Mule Guitars and oh, yeah. they had a steel bass. 
steel body base. And it was. Is Emil wild. the guys that do Ariel Posen's guitars? Oh, that's a good question. I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I don't think so. I am going to say, yes, they do. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, on their website now. Keep up, guys. And there he is. Yeah. Is he there? Yeah. No. yeah. Ariel Posen and Joey Landreth. Yeah. So they, I didn't know they'd started doing, because the first time I heard these is when Ariel was playing them. Oh, God. And he was it. a slightly longer, it, well, so check it out. They don't look like it, though. You can see him. You've probably watched a bunch of videos of Ariel playing. Huh, yeah. Ian, and he's been playing one of these metal guitars. Oh, crazy. Crazy. Yeah, sli slightly longer string space in. So a lot of their guys, at least the ones that I've seen, um, use slide as well a lot. And I'm oh. not sure whether because of the steel, it might be like resonates, Dobro kind of vibes. But just for context, they don't look like Dobros anybody. They do Dobro shape instruments, but they Got do it. ones that just like tellies and stuff like that. Yeah. And they're actually steel. Like open uh, tuning, lower tuning maybe. I mean, are we talking kind of baritone world, like open C, open D kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. Is that like that. Ariel's vibe kind of? I feel like he's sort of like a low open tuner, but I could. <gasps> the Thunder Mule. I've got it here. Was that the bass you played, Chaz? The Thunder Mule? Oh, I don't know. It didn't have it a is. name. It, it was it looked like a P bass, bass Sharon. Was it. Yeah, and it was wild because it looked like it was wood, and then you pick it up and it's cold. Oh, yes, yeah. oh, yes, weird. it's a thunder mule, and Crazy. it looks oh my word! And they do it in pink. <laughs> <laughs> Go, get one. Go get one. Go get one, Divine. There. I'm just gonna send this over to you guys so you can check it out. I'm they just sending look it over sick. Now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and there's a vid of you playing this, Sharon. Yeah. Oh. Can yeah, you guys yeah. imagine though, like you're doing the outdoor gig in February in Minnesota. It's <laughs> freezing cold. <laughs> like I do sometimes. And you know, you go to grab that instrument, like, man, there was a bass that I played for a minute that had an aluminum neck and the neck was always cold. And I thought like, ooh, it, I yeah. don't, I personally don't want that in my life. I don't want a cold instrument. Like, oh, Well, Scott's the... got the glove. So for once it's actually so yeah, the go. What's that good bass go? company that made the aluminium bass necks? Mm. Yeah, well, there's a few. There's a company called Illuminati in Chicago. Oh, no, like older. Oh, Travis right. Bean. Oh, Travis Bean, of course. Travis Bean, yeah. They did the original. I think they, they did. Well, I'm sure that they didn't do yep. the original, but they're the ones that, that jumped to mind for me. Yep. Like, they were older basses. Have you heard Wicked? Do you know the, the musical Wicked? Yes. Yes. Um, where am I going with this? Okay, okay. Travis Bean, al al aluminium next. Aluminum next. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Sharon, aluminium or aluminum? Aluminium, because of German. Aluminium. What? Uh, Where's that other eye, Ian. guys? Where's the other eye? Where is it sorry. in the word? What do you mean? That's how you spell it. Aluminium. Aluminium. That's how you spell it. Aluminium. That is not how you spell it. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> but anyway, so um, Wicked, the musical, I can remember a friend of mine, he was doing sort of like, it was on tour. So anyway, he was doing something to do with it. And he was listening to the original cast recording and the, the bass sound was killing on it. Anyway, he finds out who the bass player was. He messages him online. And he's like, what bass were you playing on, on the uh, original recording to Wicked? And it was a Travis Bean. Travis with Bean. With an aluminium neck. Wow. There you go, aluminum. That's cool. I mean, Kramer yeah. used some too, I think. And there's a company, there's another neck maker that's really cool called Robot Graves that makes oh, aluminum Robot necks, Graves. aluminium <laughs> necks. And I mean, what a cool company name, geez. Uh, and they, you know, there's a company in um, a bass maker uh, named Nick from Island Instruments in Canada who does a bunch of aluminum stuff. And he uses that Robot Graves stuff and it's it's sweet. I just don't think... For me, I don't know. Like, I want a warm wooden neck, I guess. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. If you're, cold, doing an don't know. Out, if you're doing an outdoor gig in December here, I mean, probably in Minneapolis as well, the strings are going to be cold no matter what. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh, no, it does matter. Because it's the your whole hand is touching mm, this thing. Oh, I mean, no, no, no. Cool. Well, it I guess matters. it's metal. It's true. I, <laughs> it's, I hope can I, I tell never you a find story out. about a friend of mine. I never find out. <laughs> yeah. Can I tell yes. you a story, of, a, a story about a friend of mine? This friend of mine, bass player actually, recently did a gig and, and unknown to him because... He just didn't think about asking. <laughs> is that he tra he traveled to this place to do a gig, did the yeah. flight, got there, yeah. and it was minus 
40. Minus 40. That's, yes. That's cold, dude. Selfies. Yeah, and, and this friend of mine, he because he didn't ask when he got there, he didn't, you'd think he had a, a winter jacket. Mm. You might think he, he, he had some appropriate oh, footwear. Oh, hold on. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. But no, <laughs> he just had his flannel shirt. He had a flannel shirt and his Nikes. I am and this so friend dense. of mine was this friend of mine was Ian Allison. <laughs> <laughs> I am such oh a Listen, I'm an idiot for a lot of reasons, and this is only one of them. <laughs> like I, didn't I even, love that I, I, I was, I was like, talking, oh, and really? you didn't know I was talking about you. <laughs> that is amazing. Amazing. I since got a screenshot. I'm like, yo, dude, 40, negative 40 is where Celsius and Fahrenheit meet. It's like the apex of hell. <laughs> so aluminium next, not good for that gig. Yeah, and I'm just, wow. I'm just reading here. It says, I love the way that, um, what are they called? Mule. Yeah, mule, mule guitars. Mule Resonic. What, how do you pronounce that, Sharon? Anyway, we'll just go with Mule. Mule Guitars, oh. it says, Behold, this is from their page, I love it. Behold, <laughs> Behold. my bass playing brethren, the Thunder Mule. <laughs> then it goes on. Bass is a rad, and this one is made out of steel. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> I freaking love this. A hollow steel resonating chamber attached to those big old strings. The sound can only be described as thunder. Okay, a little more. <laughs> Wow. The hollow seal body imparts a 3D element to the sound, much like it does to the mule caster. And, in, and by being made of steel, it keeps the def definition in the notes and it, that it's tough to describe. It's something to be felt. Anyway, I just love the way that they That's describe great. it. That's great. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. Behold my base. Behold. The there was another <laughs> company. You, was do cool. you guys remember James Trussart? No? Okay. I don't. I don't. Just radio silence. <laughs> cool, guys. Cool, Sorry. guys. Hey, hey, guys. Sorry. Hey, guys. Yeah. Are we still are we doing this podcast or what? No, no? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> do you hear him? Stop. I can't hear him. He's talking. I, but I, can't I, was, hear him. So I was stuck. I I'd literally, my brain had sort of unplugged, and I was thinking about the word behold. Literally, you were speaking, Ian. Behold. And, the, and as you were talking, in my mind, I was thinking, I need to use the word, word behold more. How can I use that more in my life? Anyway, uh, I apologize. Oh, that's I'm great. coming clean. Mm. All so good. What, was, what was the guy called, Ian? Oh, James called? Trussart. So cool. I, I guarantee no. you've seen these instruments before. They, they made a thing called the Steelcaster. Um, and I don't know if they're still around, but I'm oh. going to just, I'm oh, going to just see. send this to you because it they is make pretty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hold up. Hold on. You guys are going to. The Steelcaster. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my Are you God. seeing it? That's, yeah. Scott, this is what you should have played for your freaking album. Talk about. Let me have a look. Steelcaster. Talk about some cyberpunk shit. Oh, it's re they're really cool. Um, and there's a few people that played them. Yeah, there's a huge. If you scroll oh. down a little. Yeah. Look at oh, all these. So cool. They're so oh, cool. Well, some like of them the, are like yeah. really rusty. Yeah. Have you played are, one? Yeah. There was a company in. Um, there's a music store in Minneapolis that used to stock some of these, uh, and it was a blast. And then all the different <coughs> colors, and these were cool. I don't know if, I mean, it looks like they're still doing it, but they just haven't made a big splash recently, at least that I'm aware of, but they're cool. Uh, is it like metal laid on top of wood, or is it all metal? I think that some of them have like a wood surround, hmm. and then they have metal insides, but then a lot of them are hollow. See the ones that are like yeah. corrugated? They have to be. They're so heavy, even as a hollow like oh, body. Oh yeah, 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 right. Yeah. So they're hollow, and you can see the guts inside through the corrugation. I don't oh, know. That's cool. It's just a vibe. But, okay, someone yeah. educate me. What's the point of the steel? Is it like it didn't feel like a massively different tone, and just felt rounder and warmer? Is that? Well, I that's imagine it? nothing really. <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> no. Well, Liz, I will say it's this: just cool. The aluminum <laughs> necks that I've played have felt like hitting a string that's attached to two ends of a pole it like in terms of response and sustain it was like oh, the response dun, is slightly different like it just oh, okay. felt really more like a neck through thing than a bolt-on so shaz it might yeah. be right down your street you know i don't know but it's too heavy it's too heavy yeah, it was like a well, four string regular size thing and i was like 
Yeah. What the the mule one the mule. was? Yeah, it wasn't that heavy. heavy. It was fine, but it was just you know heavier than you'd expect for a regular yeah, sure. four string P bass looking sure. thing. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But it sounded great. It was really comfortable to play. And it looked like wood. Uh, it blew my mind. <laughs> I definitely want to check one out. Yeah. Okay, before we close it up today, have we got any final shouts out? Shout outs. Uh, uh, we maybe shouted it out before, but shout out to to Maddie and Spencer Lull. Thank you for making me this bass. Uh, 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 oh gosh, maybe it's been about a year ago. Um, and just thanks. They they are so amazing. They're like incredible hosts. They would take us out to coffee and dinner and yep. hang out and drop us off at the hotel. I mean, just like really, really lovely people yeah. making lovely instruments. And also shout out to LEH. Um, got to play some of their basses. They, and uh, I believe. She oh, used to work at Sadowski, right? Yes. Yes. That's the story. Um, They're the basses with the, instead of the rotary uh, bass controls they've actually got sliders haven't they like a yeah mixing little, desk. like little cool. faders yeah exactly right yeah yeah and that was cool and the way that they build their instruments and like just the fit i mean you know they've been doing awesome stuff on uh instagram showing build process showing neck fit showing cool things like you know carving the nut and how much time and energy goes into something like that yeah. and just incredible beautiful beautiful bass guitars yeah that was cool is it just her is she doing it all on her own i or she got a team i don't actually know i um, if she has a team it's small got it yeah, yeah. I, I i follow her on on um ig love yep. it yeah so cool. more people more makers should do videos like her they're cool yeah i agree i agree kind of seeing yeah. the process and like oh yeah seeing how Show much us how work. the bread is made yeah <laughs> right and like yeah teach us about how much time goes into this stuff because it ain't small. There's a really famous marketing um, and sales story that I'm about to butcher. So I apologize because somebody listening to this right now will know the original, the real one. Yeah. But there was a beer maker way back, I'm probably like early 1900s. There, there we go, maybe. But it was a long time ago anyway. <laughs> yeah. And this beer company... Um, they paid a really expensive consultant, a really sort of like notable, famous sales and marketing consultant to, to work with them. And he went to the factory and he walked around the factory and he was asking people how it was made, blah, 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 blah. And, and then he put together his marketing plan and he took it to the executives and he was like, what we're going to do is we're going to say, and it was basically, it was like a tagline that told, that just said, made with and it was like whatever however they made it right and he said this is what we're going to do and the executives are like but everybody all of the other beer makers do that and he said yeah but nobody is actually telling people right we're be the first. and and i can't remember what beer company it was but anyway they got the majority market share the year after that they ran that marketing campaign and yeah. again it's just sort of like another it's really important to tell people how it's made yeah, yeah. like made with water hops <laughs> barley <Yeah. laughs> it was something to do with the actual tanks that they were the bee was in it was something yeah. i can't remember what it was but it's a a real famous kind of notable campaign that oh happened. that's cool yeah. yeah 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 because we don't know i think a, a lot of makers just assume maybe like oh this wouldn't be interesting or probably everybody kind of knows how much work goes into uh, like you know sanding a neck for instance but we don't know yeah we have no like idea it, like i imagine sort of like th talk about your instruments like an artisan bakery talks about their bread absolutely yes yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure anyway yeah. shout outs go for it keep going Wait, uh, so I just remembered I had another I had another moment of something that was really disappointing because oh, I wanted to go okay. look at Neural. And I don't know why, but it's funny that it's Line 6 and Neural that's just completely messed up. And I have a video <laughs> of me walking to the booth number yes, and showing you the booth number and then showing you what's there. Okay, I'm going to share this because it's hilarious. Yes, check this out. This is wild. And after you share it, we will describe it. <laughs> because it was so oh, strange. Right. Hit it. 
there's just nothing there. It's just oh, there's just, it's just oh, I thought, you, I thought you were going to show, but but there is something there. There's a huge word. Well, that yeah, says, but the number is like this is where the number is. You look up and then it says soon. soon. That's what the number says. It just says soon. Yep, there there's big letters what, standing those big up. White letters. Those big white letters yep. there say say soon. You could have got an angle of that, Chess. Yeah. Sorry well, to I bust mean, your chops on that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, this wait, is, this is, is like there, a number there? there might be a number there. This is the only place I found the number, and I was like, what the hell? There's just nothing. It's yeah. so disappointing. It it was super bizarre. I don't know if they were planning on something or if it was kind of like a marketing stunt or something. But it, it was I literally think it's that. eight it feet tall. It sounds like a Doug move. Yeah, Doug move, doesn't it? Yeah, it's Doug. It's like uh, yeah, we're not going to go. We'll just put a yeah. And did it say anything about neural no. on it or was nope. it nothing? It no. just said soon. Nothing. But I'm sure a lot of people took pictures I think that's and videos. Pretty cool. Of it. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. Was so I'm... disappointing. I was so disappointed. I was like, "What the hell? What soon? What?" what? Oh well. I yeah. Mean, Do you know like don't... the? Yeah. Go on in. Sorry. If they don't in incorporate their uh, plugins into their hardware, like that is that has to be the next thing. So all the archetype stuff, right? Like yeah, Corey Wong and Pliny and all the you know yeah. artists that they all the amazing artists that they have. If that doesn't go into the hardware. I would be very surprised. I think that's the move. I think that's what they'll yeah, do. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. That's my prediction. I think that they're, yeah, really strong. I'm like, just so, like, constantly impressed by Doug. I think he's, like, obviously a monster operator to be able to pull the moves that he's done. But I love that. I kind of love the sort of, like, tongue in cheek, like, mystique of it. <laughs> I think that the first time I saw anything like that being used was when I first, it would have been like, I was 21. I first moved to Leeds. So we're talking like uh, 99. I was living in Leeds. It was 1999. Oh my God. Sharon, how old were you in 1999? Three. <laughs> Sharon was three. <laughs> Sharon was still shit in her pants. Yes. Anyway. Because yeah, well, I, I might have been two. Because I was born end of 96. <laughs> well, then you were definitely shit in your pants. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to remove the maybe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, and I was driving around Leeds and I noticed that there was these black posters all over Leeds and it just, on the poster, it just said, who is Dave Matthews? It was all over oh, Leeds. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, who is Dave Matthews? And I can remember just thinking, oh, that is such a cool campaign because it just, you know, evokes the question, well, who is well, Dave who Matthews? Who the hell is Dave Matthews? <laughs> who <Yeah>. is? <laughs> and, and nobody knew, like the Dave Matthews band was never really a thing in the UK, but I did think it was a really cool marketing campaign. Hmm. So, you know, obviously the, the neural went one step further <laughs> and removed their name from it. Yeah. So it just says, who is? Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> you know, so, but I, but I do like the spirit of it. Soon. Because you we weren't expecting see. to like go and like press stuff. You're, I was like, <sighs> yeah. Go Sharon, on. did you see Sire? We were supposed to go see Sire. I we never I'll found them. Yeah, it was it was yeah. a bit of a it was, it was a big haul, a lot of stuff. Is it because it's so big? Oh. <laughs> okay. The most yes. the weirdest thing about Nam is how they've been running for I don't even know how long, and somehow they have still not figured out a good numbering system, and how to like help you find stuff if yeah. we'd have yeah. the numbers of like where you need to go and it would take us like 20 minutes to find it and it's like 4250 and the one next to it is like 6280 it's like how how does this make sense yeah like, yeah, yeah weird yeah and weird every... things about, maybe that's another episode in itself weird things about now let me tell you some <laughs> weird things about now have you ever gone to like cancel a subscription service like netflix or prime yeah and you're just like you're trying to cancel and it's like you know it's it's almost impossible mm. <laughs> I have been subscribed to Nam. I don't know how I even ended up subscribed to Nam, but like Lisa said, "Hey, you're paying Nam three hundred dollars again." I was like, oh, "This has happened for the last four years. Like, why? Like, what is going on?" So I do not know what's going on. Oh. I, who knows? But yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> and then I'll forget about it, and then that'll happen next year 
maybe like this is going to be my un- entire life. I'm going to have a <laughs> lifetime subscription to Nam because it only comes around once a year and then they just bill me for what I, I'm so confused. What are you getting from Nam? Yeah, what, what are you getting? I, I, from I have now? no idea. I have no idea. I don't know what. I signed something, I ticked a box somewhere on the internet years ago and yeah. now miraculously money gets sucked out of my account every year to now. I don't even know. <laughs> Maybe it's probably like, Nam don't even know this. Thing, like, oh. Oh, it doesn't even exist anymore. Nam pay. Yeah, huh? donations. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh yeah, this guy looks like he wants to donate three hundred bucks to us on a yearly basis. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I ain't got a clue what's going on. Anyway, let's just see how long I can t- I can keep that going for. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, should we call it? Yeah, guys. Hey, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we love doing this podcast. Are you kidding me? Scott Devine, thank you for sending your correspondence, Sharon Reynolds and me, to the NAM show. We had a great time. We're dragging you along with us, yes. dude. We're gonna. You're just going to be drinking coffee. You're going to be kicking and screaming, but then you're going to love it. Next year, giant SBL bur- booth. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say a booth. I said, I said a go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just wait. In two years, there'll be a booth. And in three years, there'll be like a whole like speaking thing. Just wait. Just wait. It's going to happen. That's what we want. Maybe, That's what we maybe want. Maybe it will happen. Yeah, maybe um, it will. Hey, if you like it, hey, if you like the pod, you guys, check it out. We're trying to get this thing moved over to the main YouTube channel. That's what we're doing. We also, of course, have it streaming on all the places you just listen to audio. We're trying to do an okay job of explaining the things that we put up. But if you want the full experience, head on over to YouTube the SBL channel, the main channel, and you can see all of our beautiful faces and beautiful bases. Leave a comment. Let us know what you want to talk about. If you're just listening, please leave us a five-star review. It really helps out the channel. And until next time, see you guys.